Skylanders turned out to be a massive success for Activision last holiday season, so it's no surprise that Juggernaut Publisher is back to double dip. Skylanders Giants brings plenty of new characters into the mix, but the novelty of the NFC technology is wearing thin. Does the game bring something new to the table to justify its high cost, or is it just trying to capitalize on the obsession of collecting toys? No stopping me! Evil Chaos has broken free from his imprisonment after the end of the original game, and this time he's learned of an ancient power that can help him conquer Skyland once and for all. Once again, it's up to the Skylanders to save the day before it's too late. Stories don't get more basic than this, and its subject matter is squarely aimed at younger audiences. This feels like any other dim-witted cartoon series whose sole purpose is creating lucrative merchandising. Boom. At first glance, it's difficult to tell the difference between Skylander's giants and its predecessor. The biggest shift in the formula is the omission of the larger hub environment in favor of a smaller ship that serves as your primary base of operations between levels. Though it's quicker and easier to manage your characters in this condensed zone, the sense of exploration and charm is lost. Additionally, the game feels hurried along as you're whisked away from level to level with such brevity. However, there are plenty of side attractions to be found here that offer significant rewards. The biggest problem with Skylanders Giants is the slow start. Earlier levels are a lesson in tedium and monotony. The enemies are pushovers and the puzzles boil down to pushing blocks, bashing through obstacles, or finding a key to unlock the way forward. It's all very rudimentary, but eventually the game finds its legs and improves. Later levels offer much needed variety by changing up the mechanics every so often and providing more thoughtful puzzles, more intricate activities, and tougher opponents. However, it's hard to overlook the fact that you'll likely get burned out on the experience before the game has a chance to shine. Levels offer a good sense of exploration with plenty of hidden treasure that can then be used to unlock and enhance character-specific abilities. These diversions are rather lengthy and provide some of the game's better puzzles, but the issue here is that you need specific types of figures in order to gain access to these closed-off areas. This would be fine if you merely unlocked the characters later on, but the ugly truth is that this is an intentional chokehold designed to get you to buy more figures. It's a huge letdown that some of the best parts of the game are sequestered behind a virtual paywall. <laughs> It's convenient to have the ability for a friend to easily jump in and out of your game, but the cooperative play is restricted to local multiplayer only. Whether you're playing solo or with a friend, it'll likely take you around 10 hours to plow through the story mode, but the number will significantly increase if you hope to obtain every last collectible. Born to battle! <laughs> The original Skylanders made good use of NFC technology to offer virtually seamless transition of multiple characters in real time, and this holds true for the sequel. It's still incredibly simple and easy to switch between any of your characters. There's still virtually no learning curve to each Skylander, and the simple four-button interface ensures that anyone can pick it up and play. The problem is the controls are a little too basic, but the plethora of different characters and their abilities provide some compensation. On the downside, moving around and trying to attack with precision with any one of the Skylanders feels stiff. Considering how simple the control scheme is, it's hard to forgive this oversight. Even when everything's working properly, there's little variety to the combat. Except when you're in a boss battle, you're rarely asked to deviate from the strategy of mashing your attacks over and over. Enemy behaviors are quite basic, and opponents rarely push back hard enough to provide much of a threat, though the challenge spikes considerably near the end of the game. There definitely was an opportunity with this sequel for Skylanders to achieve some innovation, but it ends up playing it disappointingly safe. Whatever small measure of enjoyment it provides is short-lived. You got pulverized. Skylander's cartoon style is aptly suited for this type of game, and there is some charm to the look. However, character animations often look goofy, especially some of the walking routines, and there are a handful of visual oddities that pop up every now and then. The repetitive battle cries get tiresome, and the voice work woefully misses the mark at times. Hi, friend. Want to play puzzle? The soundtrack fares much better with solid compositions from veteran Lorne Balfe and Hans Zimmer.
Skylander's concept still feels novel, and you get the feeling that there's a lot of potential waiting to be squeezed out of the experience. However, it's clearly being held back by the focus on peddling collectible toys. There's a decent game in here, but it's ultimately hard to justify the substantial investment you'll have to throw down for all the figures required to get the full experience. How could I say no? Boom! See this and other GT shows and game reviews on the GT Originals iOS app, available now on the App Store.